Hi there, welcome to yet another FaceMaker video tutorial. This time we're gonna cover raw trees. Yes, raw trees are uh, basically uh, watch hands and they can represent a wide variety of data types. Uh, you may uh, know them b uh, for uh, displaying hours, minutes and seconds but um, they're more complex than that. They can represent a uh, variety of data types like battery, uh, steps, heart rate, and others. So yeah, they're uh, on FaceMaker, they're called raw trees um, because they can represent a wide variety of data types. And uh, they're uh, pretty much the same among all brands. So. Huawei and Amaz Fit uh, have, both have raw trees, of course. Um, also, Android uh, watches. I rarely speak of Android watches, but FaceMaker also supports them. Um, so, yeah, today we're going to talk about raw trees. And uh, to start, I will use this uh, Huawei Watch GT3 Pro. And um, I'm about to implement the new watch uh, 4 that uh, released just a couple of days and uh, I'm just waiting for feedback from uh, some users uh, regarding the compatibility uh, but I think they will use the same uh, watch faces as watch 3 but we have to wait so until then I'm gonna use this one GT3 Pro okay so I'm gonna show you uh, what a raw tree is. So basically we can add a container here and for every container you have to define a data type. So let's go ahead and select a data type here. Um, let's say battery. And there we go. So now we have a battery container and inside the battery container we can add just about any uh, uh, kind of widget we want. We'll be going with a raw tree, this one here. Okay, so uh, you may notice that when we added the raw tree, which is this, uh, the uh, widget itself has a uh, pivot, a little cross in the middle. So this is called the pivot and this is the point around where the uh, widget will rotate. So this will be the center of rotation. And basically that's what a rotary is. It's uh, um, a center, an axis, uh, or, or something that revolves, that rotates around a center or an axis. And this is the uh, rotation point, the pivot, okay? So now that we uh, added this uh, raw tree here, we now can select the data type, which is battery because it's inside a battery container. And uh, then we have as usual three options. We can generate a watch hand, which FaceMaker allows you to generate a kind of basic uh, watch hands, but they might serve the purpose depending on the design you're going for. Um, library, uh, FaceMaker has a wide variety of uh, watch hands you can choose from, as you can see here. We even have arms for uh, some cartoon uh, characters. And yeah, you can choose uh, any and here from the FaceMaker library or you can upload your own. So imagine you designed your hand on Photoshop, GIMP, or uh, any other design uh, software. Uh, you can then import it here. Now, one thing that is very important, uh, every uh, watch hand should be imported facing 12 o'clock. So pointing at 12 o'clock uh, or north, if you prefer, and um, and then, only then, should you uh, define the start and the end angles, okay? So, this is also important because uh, the start and end angles define where the rotary will start to rotate and well when it will end, 
okay? So basically these are the uh, main guidelines uh, concerning uh, raw trees and we can now proceed by importing, for now, importing a hand from our uh, library. Nesha, I think I'll go with this one. So this is a uh, second uh, raw tree and it doesn't matter, it's just for, uh, you know, just for this uh, tutorial uh, purpose. Um, now I'll explain these values here. So the X and the Y uh, pivot uh, positions are basically the position of this point, of this little cross you see here. So this defines where the um, pivot will be located and the hand will rotate around it. Uh, so it will be the center of rotation, okay? And this is very important because as you have noticed, I imported this uh, watch hand from the library. But the library already has the, the pivot of the hands defined, so you don't have to mess with it after you import it. But if you import an image you made on Photoshop or GIMP or whatever, uh, you'll have to define this, uh, this uh, pivot location, okay? And uh, usually uh, the pivot um, will be located on the absolute center of the image. So imagine this image is 84 and the central pivot location is, is at 42, which is half this value, okay? And the vertical position is located at 2, 217. So if you import an image, this value for this specific image, for example, will be located on 141, which is the absolute center of the uh, watch hand or the rotary. And if we uh, press play now, you'll notice that this is rotating around that point where the pivot is. Okay? So, of course, this is uh, wrong, but uh, it usually does, <laughs> does serve the purpose uh, if you have a full screen uh, watch hand uh, image and let me explain it to you real quick here so let's delete this rotary have a new one battery and let's go into the library and let's load that same image there so when you import imagine the image is 466 by 466 and uh, uh, the center of the watch hand which is this place here, is located in the center of the image, this is what you'll have. So I made the image the same size as the watch canvas, okay? And when you import the image, the pivot is placed in the center, in the exact center of the image, okay? So uh, you will have the, uh, the pivot automatically defined for you if you do this. So, uh, but you shouldn't use uh, full screen images, especially for moving images, like a rotary, which is moving every second, for example, uh, with uh, the second hand. And uh, so you should always crop to content. So this is a little trick I am uh, telling you, if you import uh, the, the hand with its uh, rotation center exactly in the center of the image, uh, the face maker will set the pivot for you in the center of the image, so in the right place for the pivot, and then you can simply go in here and say, crop the content. And now what face maker did was it cut the, the, the area of the image to include only the part where uh, pixels aren't transparent. But the pivot was kept at the same place. Although we cut the image, okay, the pivot is located at the same place. So if I press play now, you'll see that it's moving perfectly, okay? So this is a trick you can use. So import uh, with a full-sized image, 
and with the center of the hand, so the place you want it to rotate around, should be in the middle of the image, okay? Then you import and then just do a crop to content and the pivot will be uh, kept, but the image will be cut to size and will be optimized, okay? And you should do this with all images, not just raw trees, but any image you have on a watch face should be cut or cropped to the maximum, okay? So let's proceed. This is a, a pivot uh, location explained. So you can do it like this and place it in the, in the right place. And usually I just zoom in and fine tune. And you will never have a perfect placement because yeah, half of uh, two, uh, 463, it's 233. And depending on the absolute um, width of uh, your image, uh, you may never be able to place it exactly on the center. But just go with the best next value. Um, basically, you it will be unnoticeable. Uh, one pixel more or less will be perfectly unnoticeable and no one will know, okay, that this is not perfectly uh, centered. And uh, okay, let's proceed. So you can also just pick a pivot manually. So this is a, basically a pivot uh, picker. So if you press it and then just come in here or better, this is not on this, on this image. This is used here. So let's try and place it and it it placed it so it's not perfect so this tool is not perfect but you can uh, try and pick the closest uh, place and then zoom in and uh, make it perfect or uh, closer to perfect and yeah this is the pivot picker so you pick it here and next we have uh, two of the most important settings, which is the start, starting degrees and ending degrees. So this defines where the, um, the pivot or rather the rotary will start and where it will end. And for that, I am going to create a little example here. We're going to do a battery gauge, so a gauge. So let's include an image. And let's go into the library. I think I have a couple of them uh, here. So now this one, for example. Okay, this one is perfect. Let's align to the center. We have this little dot here that tells us that this should be the rotation center. So let's put it there. There you go. And now imagine that uh, this is zero battery and this is 100 battery. So let's go into the battery container, add a raw tree, and load a, an image from the library. So let's choose a small one, one that will work for this case. So let me see here. Uh, we have so many that I don't know which one to choose, but I'll, I'll go with this one, okay? Yeah, this one is perfect. So we want to set the start and end angles. And uh, as any uh, hand should be imported uh, pointing north, this will not work, okay? So we want it to start here. So we know that this is zero degrees, this is 90, and this is 180, and this is 270. And when we get here, it will be 360. So 360 degrees, a full circle. And we know that uh, the start angle must be here. So we know it's more or less uh, 180. So let's come in here and insert 180, okay? So it needs to be more. So let's increase the value. And there we go. The start angle is defined. So, and 360, which is the default value here, should be in this point, in this place here. So we need it to be less. So let's decrease this value. So 
something like that. So now we have the start and the end angles uh, defined. So if I now uh, unfocus the end angle, the input, it goes and resets to the start angle, always, okay? So if we press play now, there we go. Now you see that the hand knows that it should start on uh, 210 degrees and hand on 330 degrees, okay? And uh, yeah, this is how it works, the start and end angle of a rotary. But let's say that you have a design that you want it to behave differently. So you want it to make it start here and hand here. Well, uh, you can do uh, two things. It will work in two ways. So you can s invert these values. So start on 330 and hand on 210. Like that and press play. And there we go. Now it's starting from this angle here and handing on this one. So basically we just inverted uh, the values and it works, okay? But this is not always the case. So there are some angles that need different settings and you need to play with negative uh, degrees here. So let me show you uh, how you can achieve that. So let's pause for now and let's go into this image here and let's rotate it by um, 90 degrees, like this. And now let's zoom in and try to place it the best we can here. So something like that. Okay, so now we want it to start here and hand here. Okay, but you can uh, set the start angle and let me show you what I'm talking about here. You can set the starting angle to be this one in positive values and end on this one in positive values. And let me show you why. So let's set this to 300 and hand on 60. So you should think that Oh yeah, this will start on 300 and then rotate clockwise up until 60. Well, that's not the case. Let, let me press play here. So you see what's happening. Uh, watches uh, detect the start and end angle and will, uh, since the start angle is larger than the uh, end angle, it will rotate counterclockwise. And this principle is important because you should always understand that if the start angle is bigger, larger than the end angle, the, the, the hand will rotate counterclockwise. If it's the other way around, so uh, the start angle is smaller than the end angle, it will rotate clockwise. So we need to make this start angle smaller than this end angle. And how do we do that? Well, it's easy. You know that this is zero degrees, right? And here it's 60 if we go clockwise. So counterclockwise, this here, being on the same angle but opposite angle on the other side, this should be minus 60. So there we go. So the hand didn't even bulge and uh, because it's pointing in the same place. But now the start angle is smaller than the end angle. And now the hand will rotate clockwise. So let's uh, try and press play. And there we go. Now the hand rotates clockwise. So let's say we want the same uh, uh, span of rotation, so this amplitude of rotation, but we want it to start here and hand here. So to make it rotate counterclockwise, the start an angle needs to be larger 
than the end angle. So now we just need to invert this value. So this will become 60 and this one will become minus 60. Let's press play. And there we go. Now I hope you understood this uh, principle, which is the how to make a, a hand rotate uh, clockwise or counterclockwise. And this is important. So the difference is that the to rotate counter or uh, rather to rotate clockwise in the same direction as the uh, as a clock, um, the start angle should be smaller than the end angle okay and then it will rotate to the right so clockwise to rotate counterclockwise the start angle should always always be larger than the end angle and that way it will rotate in the opposite direction but you have to, to think about where it starts and ends because if an intermediate value is zero which is here, it's the medium value here, um, then you should work with negative, negative degrees, okay? Just like you see here. Okay, so we covered uh, this important part of the start and end angles. And uh, there's one last uh, setting to talk about which doesn't uh, really interfere with how the hand behaves on the watch, which is this one. This is just a pivot color. And imagine this part here was totally red. So let me show you here by applying a uh, fill color effect on this hand. And let's make it red, okay? So now you can really see the, the pivot. If the hand were red, totally red, you wouldn't be able to see the pivot. So for that, you can simply come in here and choose another color just like that and voila now you can see it so this is just to make your life easier if you save this uh, file and then open this uh, facemaker project the uh, pivot would still be yellow so you could see it so this is a setting that is saved with a widget not exported it's only used on facemaker but yeah it's there for your pleasure and to make your life easier okay so yeah, I think we covered all the aspects of a simple uh, rotary setup, but I would like to talk about other things. The first one is the, um, and let's go this time, let's go with the seconds rotary. And just so that they don't get on the way, let's remove the widget and background main containers. And let's go back into this uh, rotary, um, the seconds rotary. There we go. So here, as I said, you could generate one, import one from the library, which was what we did, or uh, upload an image you made yourself on GIMP or Photoshop. So right now I'm gonna cover this feature here, which is unique uh, to FaceMaker and it allows you to make um, basic uh, watch hands. So let me show you here. I press generate and you now have this shape here, okay? This is supposed to be a hand and I made it this way because um, you can, you, oh, you might need a, a design like this, uh, basically. And uh, yeah, we're gonna uh, start with this a simple shape. If we press play, you see it's indicating seconds using a simple shape that rotates around its center okay so now you may need to make it larger so wider by increasing this value here if we press play you still have a shape that rotates around itself okay using its absolute center now, let's go back in here in this setting and make it uh, smaller, something like, uh, I don't know, 16 or 15, just like that. Or rather, I advise you to use um, round values, not uh, uh, odd values uh, for 
the width and all the other values in here. There might be cases where you can use even uh, values or odd values, I mean, uh, but this is not the case. We're creating um, a watch hand and uh, you should use uh, even values always, okay? So yeah, this defines the width. So it will grow uh, uh, the same in both directions. To break this, so to uh, define a center, you have to enable this one here. So hand center. And a hand center will be added there. And you can now define the placement. So if we increase this value, the hand center will start going down, but at the same time will pull the hand upwards because it has to stay in the center where the pivot is. For now, at least, then you can change it. But uh, yeah, this is what it basically does. So let's make it uh, thinner and let's go with a even value. Um, and let's um, increase the uh, hand center width just by doing this, okay? And if you want to pull it down, all you need to do is make this this value here smaller. So when dealing with the uh, hand center rotation placement, you're also defining where the hand itself will end. Okay, because this is to keep the hand center centered on the pivot. Okay, so I know it, this can be hard to understand and grasp, but uh, I think this is the best way to do it. Okay, so um, and basically then you have the hand tip. So let's enable it. And there we go. Now we have an arrow, but we can define a round tip and make it the same width as the hand just like that and now it's round and uh, and the height so let's change this to flat okay and now it is flat if we increase it just so you see what I'm saying what I'm talking about here if we increase the height of the tip this will happen okay so this allows you to have many different shapes and you know, you can put your creativity to the test <laughs> using these settings. And we can uh, easily make the tip the same width as the hand and then define it as a uh, triangle and there you go. Or if you don't want uh, a hand center that's round and uh, visible, all you can do is just make it the same width as the hand itself. So, 8 and 8, and now you can see the center, okay? So, if we press play now, you'll see that we have a hand that works, okay? It's a very simple one, I agree, but uh, yeah, there are designs where this doesn't matter, all you want is uh, some quick hand to work with and this will uh, I think will do will will serve your purpose so basically uh, finally we have the border so you can add borders and if you look here or let me just add an image here as a background and go into the library and load one of these uh, backgrounds we have here okay Let's go back into the Rotary Impress Generate. So, Facemaker will remember the last settings so you don't have to start over uh, creating the, uh, the hand. So, let's zoom in and uh, let's lock it. And now, let's increase the border width. So, now you see what we did here. The hand has a width, a black border. You can change color. So, uh, let's define a green one. A different green uh, maybe this dark green and there we go so this is basically how you do a uh, watch hand in face maker 
But there are other settings that you can uh, play with. So for example, let's say you wanted floating hands. They're not connected to the center, they're just floating. You might have seen uh, that kind of design um, uh, on the internet. There are a lot of them like that. So what you do here is make the hand shorter than the height of the hand center. So let me show you here. And there you go. Now it's floating and you have the center there. Okay, and if you press play. And now let's say you didn't want the watch hand center. So all you have to do is set it as zero, just like that. And now it is invisible and you have a floating hand, okay? So right now this watch hand is uh, generated by us in FaceMaker. Um, and let's say you wanted to give it a, you know, some design, uh, give it a different color you could use, of course, effects. And I will be covering them uh, because they're uh, a whole topic of their own. You can see how many they are. Uh, there are a lot and they have all the, the, they all have different settings. So I won't be covering them today, but I'm gonna show you how you can give um, a special design to your watch hand. So for that, you just come in here and you uh, have a gradient. And immediately you can see that this gradient is being applied to the hand. So let's say you wanted a different colored tip here. And this is very easy. You just have to define first the, start, the starting color, just like that. And now let's say I want to use these two colors, okay? Um, or maybe not, let's go with yellow and red or maybe not because the background is red so nope no nope. let's go back to the first one okay or rather let's use a blue one and this one will define a yellow tip there you go or orange perhaps so yeah that's it so i want the hand to be uh, blue and the tip to be yellow but right now this is a uh, pro progressing uh, gradient, a soft gradient. We need to make it uh, the, the transition harsh. So how do we do that? So first we select this first color and add a uh, stop here, okay? And now we select this one and add a stop here. And now we have an area where we can define the tip color. So, and make this transi transition harsh, just like that. And now, if we take a look and preview, and let's remove the guidelines so you can see better. So basically, we've added a, a tip uh, color to this hand, and it was as easy as adding a gradient, okay? So now let's say you want to add a shadow. Well, let's go into the shadow effect and increase the value just like that. And if you want it to be harsher, so all you have to do is increase the strength here. I believe this is too much. So let's go in and yeah, I think this is good enough. So one thing that is happening now is when you have the shadow effect, it messes up the pivot for uh, how many pixels I added to the shadow. Uh, this is temporary. I will be fixing this. It, all it needs is some calculations and to reset the pivot to the center. But right now, all you have to do is come in here after applying the shadow and uh, putting the pivot on its place. Just like that, okay? So, yeah. This should now be perfect. Let's play. Uh, first hide the guidelines by pressing Ctrl G. And now let's press play and take a look at our creation. And there we go. So yeah, we have a working hand 
with a specific design uh, solely made on FaceMaker with shadow and all that. So you see the uh, possibilities you have here. Um, they're endless. And yeah, I think this covers the uh, Rockface widgets. And yeah, next time I will be talking about uh, a collection of various widgets that are simple like uh, image widgets and line widgets, for example. And we might cover also the text widgets. Um, it's so a uh, broad uh, subject, uh, but, so I don't know if it will be possible to talk, it, uh, talk about it on the next video, but we'll see. Okay, so uh, this is it. Thank you very much for watching this video and I hope to see you on the next one. Bye.